These games are trash and they're dead to me now. That's not true. All, the, all these games are great. They're all great. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murphy. Today we're talking about games that have replaced other games for me. And this is gonna be kind of a snapshot in time. Again, like I said in the cold open, I don't hate any of these games. It's not like, oh, I hated this game and this one replaces it. No, they're all great games. And a lot of the games that have been replaced, we still have, because we still really, really enjoy them. But at this point in time, I would much rather play this game over this game. And those two games feel similar, do a similar thing, kind of fall into the same ballpark. And so we're gonna talk about games that have replaced other games. And down in the comments, let me know what's a game that has replaced another game for you. A quick caveat before we get to the list, I am not gonna be including games that are like the same game. What I'm talking about is say Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars for me has been replaced by Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. I like it significantly more, but those are more or less the same game, or at least they're very, very similar. Same with Great Western Trail has been more or less replaced with Great Western Trail Argentina for me. But again, those are mostly the same game. So none of those kinds of games are gonna end up on this list, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into the list. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and let's do it. So number five is what made me think of this whole list, and that is Deep Sea Adventure, for me, is now getting replaced by Deep Dive. We just did a playthrough of Deep Dive. This is a very, very new game, and it has a lot of kind of feelings of Deep Sea Adventure. Deep Sea Adventure is a game where you are a uh, kind of a, a submariner person and you're going down and trying to find treasure down down farther and farther down into the depths. The treasure, get, the treasure gets better the farther down you go, but it's going to be harder and harder to get back up to the surface before you run out of air. I like Deep Sea Adventure a lot. My problem is it's, it's a push your luck game, as you can tell, and I just always push my luck to the very end and always end up losing this game. I never come anywhere close close to winning this game because I will always go to the bottom. And Deep Dive, you can watch a playthrough of it. We just did a playthrough of Deep Dive. Deep Dive is a game where you are penguins diving deeper and deeper and deeper, trying to find treasure. In this case, treasure is food because you're just trying to, trying to go down there and eat stuff. But it's a push you're lucky because as you go deeper, there's going to be more and more predators about. And when you flip over a predator, you are then going to get locked. So that penguin is now locked. But getting locked down there is not actually that bad of a thing because that penguin Penguin is now juking and jawing and distracting that predator. And so now your next penguin can actually jump over that whole depth because that predator is distracted. And so there's actually benefits to getting caught in this, benefits to having quote unquote the bad thing happen to you actually kind of works out. And then also when all three of your penguins get caught, you then just take them all, get them all back, and you actually get like a little bonus because of it. You get to take a tile with you, take some food with you. And so when you do kind of get caught, you're completely stuck, you just get everything back. And so it to me, it feels similar to Deep Sea Adventure because you're, one, you're in the water in both games and you're diving deeper and deeper and deeper, trying to find better and better and better treasure. But this one is less punishing and just feels like it works smoother. I just like it a lot better. Um, it's got some set collection in it, so there's also more to think about in the game. I just really, really like it. I think it's absolutely outstanding. And Deep Sea Adventure is good. We never really pull it out because it just kind of ends up being too tough, too brutal, and we just suck at it because Mike and I push our luck too far. But Deep Dive, there's more strategy going on and there's just more to do. And so I really like Deep Dive and that has replaced Deep Sea Adventure for me. The next game that's on the chopping block getting replaced is Kitchen Rush, and Kitchen Rush is getting replaced by Rush MD. Now, these are made by the same publisher. They both have the name Rush in the title, and they both use sand timers as workers. But other than that, they're actually not really similar at all in terms of games. In Kitchen Rush, you are sand timers, and those are your kind of workers, and you're going around and you are trying to fulfill orders. Different orders want different things, like meat, cheese, vegetables, all that kind of stuff, and you have to cook things to a certain amount, and it's really fun, but it's really, really, really hard. It's so difficult, it's so hard, it's so stressful, and for us, we always just found it to be a little bit too difficult and when you're adding the difficulty on top of the stress of a real-time cooperative game, it just, we liked it. We didn't ever like love it, love it, love it. And then Rush MD came along. And Rush MD, you are running a hospital MD. Um, and you are running a hospital. Same thing where you have sand timer workers, you have doctors and then nurses. And this game is actually 
bigger and actually has more going on because in Rush MD, there's a whole bunch of little mini games within the games. You're getting patients. Those patients need certain treatments. They might need an x-ray. They might need surgery. They might need some kind of CAT scan. They might need blood culture tests or whatever. And each of those little things is actually like a little mini game that you have to play in the real time round. And the thing is, is you think, okay, there's more going on and the game is bigger. Doesn't that make it harder? Actually, no. The thing we love about Rush MD is that it's bigger and crazier, but more doable at the same time. You can win the game. We often win Rush MD. It always feels like we're not going to because it's just bonkers during the game, but you can actually win and you can make the game harder, of course. And so, I really like Rush MD for that. I just also think the things you're doing within the game, all the little mini games, you're helping patients. Those patients could turn out to be way sicker than you thought. You have to do a test and that test reveals that they have this really huge problem. Also now you have to rush and try and fi fix that problem. It just felt more interesting and dynamic than Kitchen Rush. And on top of that, it's more doable. Kitchen Rush was just like hard, straight up hard, really cool. And again, the kind of rush theme works in both a hospital and in a kitchen. They're both very fast paced places. But Rush MD just works so much better to the point where we got rid of Kitchen Rush, kept Rush MD, and we absolutely love it. It's by far our favorite real time game and really has replaced every real time game that's not like a filler. There are some real time games that we like as fillers, but anything bigger than a filler, Rush MD has replaced honestly all of it because it's so darn good. We absolutely love Rush MD. That's number four. Number three is kind of a lot of different games. I'm gonna go ahead and say The Crew, but really any of these kind of small box card games that you pull out, usually with a lot of different kinds of people, all of those games have gotten replaced by Scout. Scout is so darn good. I'm really, really interested where it's gonna end up in my next top 100, um, because every time we play it, I like it infinitely more. I really love Scout, and again, Scout and Things like the crew and trick-taking games aren't the same. Scout isn't a trick-taking game, but really the reason why I thought of Scout in this aspect is because those kinds of small box card games very often come with us when we're traveling, come with us when we go home, come with us when we go to a friend's house. You know, there's those small games that you throw in a purse, throw in a bag, throw in the back seat of your car, and you kind of just always bring them places just in case someone wants to play a game. You know you can break out this game with everyone. Well, Scout has, dominated that in the last whatever six months that we've had it. It has absolutely dominated that. It goes everywhere to the point where there's lots of times where I need to bring it somewhere and I can't find it in the studio because Mike has it in his car because he just brought it somewhere. We honestly need to get another copy that I can just have like in my car because we're always constantly, one of us has it and the other one needs it because they want to bring it to this like lunch they're going to and just in case someone wants to play a game, they're gonna bring Scout. So Scout has replaced every other game in terms of that, in terms of that game that you just always bring with you, that you can play with everyone, and that it seems to go over great with everyone, with hardcore gamers, with non-gamers, it just goes well. I also love the look of Scout, it's, it's very colorful, and the theme is like circus theme, it doesn't really matter, the theme is nothing, but nonetheless it looks really, really nice, and it's just got that satisfying gameplay, and it's easier to teach than something like a trick-taking game. Trick-taking games are tend hard to teach to people who don't know trick-taking games. Scout you can teach pretty easy, it's kind of a ladder climbing game, and it just works really, really well. We absolutely love Scout, and it's just completely replaced, it's blown everything out of the the water in terms of that game that you kind of just bring everywhere, that scout for us, it replaced everything. My number two is a game that we played a whole bunch and that is the Quacks of Quidlinburg. And the Quacks of Quidlinburg is a great push your luck game, bag building game, we still have it, we still really like it. But that game for us has been replaced by Kubitos. Kubitos and Quacks of Quidlinburg have a lot of overlap. Um, they're both push your luck games, they're, they have a very similar catch up mechanism, but they just, they both really, really good. But for us at this point, Kubitos has kind of just replaced it. Um, in uh, Kubitos, you are, uh, it's a dice building game. You're building out pools of dice and it's a racing game. You're trying to do one lap around this race course and there are four different courses you can go on. And there are, I think, seven or eight different kinds of dice. There's like yellow dice and green dice and purple dice and all this kind of stuff. And each one of those dice has a power attached to it. And just like Quacks of Quidlinburg, there are many different powers that can be attached to that dice. I think it's a really brilliant way to go about 
making variability in the game. You have one component, in this case, dice and Quack and Quillenberg, in that case, those little cardboard chits. And then you just attach powers to those components and therefore you don't need new components for everything else. The only thing you need is a card that says what the component does in this game. And so all of those dice have like seven or eight different powers you can play with. And you are rolling out dice. You're trying to roll out these symbols and you're trying to race around this track. And it just works. It works really, really well. Quax and Quidlinburg is great and goes over very well with people. But I feel like recently, especially um, lately, Cubitos has been hitting with new people. Whenever we play with new people, they just absolutely love it. Because I think the race of it makes, it just, it fits better with that push your luck mechanism. Like I really like the push your luck mechanism in Quacks Quillenberg because you're bringing out these things, throw them in a pot, seeing if the pot explodes. It's very, very cool, but the intuitiveness, is intuitiveness a word? It is now. The intuitiveness of pushing your luck in a race game just seems to make sense. And it's got really cool and cute cube art and the dice are very, very nice. And it's just very, very fun to push your luck in that race. I really like pushing your luck in a race game mechanic because I just think it fits really, really well. So I still really like Quacks and Quinlanburg, but as of recently, if I ever want to play that kind of push your luck game like that, I'm reaching for Kubitos pretty much every time. I honestly, I don't know the last time I played Quacks. I know, I think it was within this year, maybe? It's been a while. We kind of burned out on Quacks um, and Kubitos kind of came in. If we want to play that push your luck game, we kind of end up playing Kubitos instead. So still really like Quacks, but Kubitos has replaced it for us, at least for right now. And number one actually used to be my number one and that is Pandemic. Still love Pandemic, don't get me wrong. I love it to death. But Pandemic um, has been replaced recently, at least for me, by The Loop. I really, really like The Loop. Pandemic and The Loop share, a, there's a specific kind of cooperative board game that Mike and I always refer to as crisis management games. So these are games where you have some kind of crisis in Pandemic, is that disease cubes are going out, and you're constantly having to try and fulfill your main goal while trying to deal with the crises that are happening on the board at this given moment. And throughout the game, those crises are going to get worse and worse and worse and pop up here and pop up there. And you have to kind of do, you're just dealing with crisis management. I really like crisis management games. I think they're fun. I really enjoy the adaptation that happens in crisis management games where you have to move over here and do this and then move over here and do this while you're trying to do your main goal. And Pandemic, use my favorite game, love it to death still, but the loop recently has been that kind of hard co-op crisis management game that I absolutely love and I wish I could play it more. Um, this is a game where you are moving through time. Dr. Foe, who is the villain in this game, is moving through all different time periods. So like the age of antiquity, the Renaissance, all the way to like the end of time. So all the way in the future. And he is going around to these different areas and dropping his clones. He made all these clones, he's dropping these areas. And these clones are basically messing stuff up. And you have to get that clone back to its proper time. So if the clone is like a Renaissance clone, you need to move them back to the Renaissance era and then they get destroyed because they can't paradox time initiative, whatever that kind of stuff. So it's really, really hard. It's really fun. And then on top of that, there's this cube tower and you're dropping these like crisis cubes these red cubes into the cube tower and you don't know where they're gonna go. And basically if you ever get a certain amount in like a sector that makes this like big crazy vortex and basically that area gets destroyed. Um, and around each one of those areas, there's different objectives and you're trying to fulfill a certain amount of those objectives. And those objectives can be a whole bunch of different stuff of like doing this at this spot, getting these kinds of clones to this spot, all these different things. But whenever one of those vortexes happens, it takes that um, objective and destroys it. It gets rid of it. So now you can never do that objective. And if you have a certain amount of vortexes, you just straight up lose the game. And this game is super hard, but every person has their own unique character that does something cool. This game, it feels very, very cooperative where a lot of times you can move each other around. You can drop down energy cubes for other people to use on their terms. It feels very, very cooperative. Like, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to set this up for you. And now then maybe you can deal with this crisis, but then it gets to that person's turn. And also now all these red cubes are over here. So now they have to change what they're going to go to do and do this instead. And throughout the game, you're getting more and more of these cards, which give you cool things to do. It's really 
really fun and you can pull off some really cool combos and in terms of like crisis management games i love pandemic i love a lot of other crisis management games but this one for me just sings it works really really well it's relatively simple and it just works and it just it's a brutally hard game that's the only beef for the game is like it's so hard we just never ever win this game but i really really like the loop i think it's outstanding um, and that is my favorite kind of crisis management game right now. And it's honestly replaced Pandemic. So that is five games and kind of six and seven and eight, depending on how far back in this video we're talking about. Those are games that have replaced other games. Again, I still really like a lot of those other games as well, many of which we still have. But these ones, if I'm reaching for that kind of game, I'm picking this one right now every single time. So down in the comments, let me know again what games have replaced other games for you. And again, why did it replace it? Uh, let me know down in the comments below as well because I want to know why these things replaced it as well. But that's going to be it for me. I'm Nick Murphy. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching that quick top five. Down in the comments, let us know what games replaced other games for you, and make sure to tell us why they replaced those games because I think that's more interesting uh, than just letting us know. We want to give a big shout out to Lucky Duck Games, Board Game Geek, and the OG sponsors, Restoration Games, for sponsoring our channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day.